G'day, I'm Brendan Stemp and uh, welcome to my workshop in Mackenzie Creek. What we're going to do now is uh, go through the pouring of uh, and mixing of the epoxy resin. In this case we're using solid cast 606 uh, from Solid Solutions and there are a few thi things that you need to know about the uh, mixing of it. Some tips that we uh, can use to ensure a good uh, finish and We've got Peter Byrne here from Solid Solutions to help us out Good to with, see you, with yeah. the uh, the mixing of it, making sure that when you do mix it, when you do use it, you have some success with it. And there are a few things that Total we need. Total success we want. Total yes. success. Yes. There are a few things that we need to know, isn't there? Equipment. First right. of all, let's start with that, Peter, if we can. Yeah, lead on them. Um, the moulds. Now, moulds for pouring epoxy resin can be anything, really, any shape and size. But I suppose that fundamentally, what you've got to realise is that epoxy resin is a liquid initially, and it will flow like water through a crack, through a porous oh, piece of material. It'll escape. Yep. So yep. the best um, material, or well, one of the best materials for a mould is, which well, obviously it's a fully sealed up thing. But the other thing is, epoxy is the best glue virtually on the earth, so it's going to stick to anything. So we really should have something that's self-releasing, and that's where plastics come in, such as a Tupperware bowl or um, virtually any plastic material for that nature, or silicon rubber, which is a, a more advanced form of moulding. But uh, for this sort of work, any found object in the kitchen, you know, is fine. And we'll do another video later on about silicon moulds, I'm sure. Mm. Mm. So stay tuned for that one. But I've brought along just some of the things that I've used in the past for, for moulds. Uh, plastic mixing jugs, um, a throwaway plastic bowl that uh, for barbecues. That's a, a good little thing if you want to make a, a bowl. Here's a, a bigger plastic bowl, bought at a cheapest chips type store. Um, what else have I got? Aluminium cans are good for uh, for moulds. Uh, cut the top off, and you can pour resin in there quite happily. Now, while we're talking about moulds. This is a mould that I used to make this project here, for instance. So that initially sat in there like so. It's not a good fit now because I've actually taken some wood and some resin off the side. When I took that out, it actually came out quite easily only because I used a releasing agent. Right. Now, that's important, isn't it, Peter, that it, the resin will actually stick to plastic eventually. Well, eventually is the word, yeah. But new fresh plastic, generally you get one or two jumps out, but then it can start to stick, so it's a good idea, as I think you're leading on to. Now, put a release agent or something of That's that nature in there. That's exactly right. Now, my release agent is simply some petroleum jelly, and I simply wipe that with a rag around the bowl, and that works beautifully as a release agent. But Solid Solutions also has release agents in a spray can. Yeah, we have them in spray cans, etc., and very fine misty sprays, which are really good when you're working with uh, moulds where you want to pick up delicate detail. Perhaps not so relevant for, for this. You can just use your Vaseline, it's fine, but we do have them, yeah. Well, that's a very good point, because when you do use Vaseline and you bring it out, you actually can see the smear marks of the Vaseline on the outside of the of the. Mm. The bowl here. Now that, in this case, was turned of off. Of course, you're turning that but back. If, so if it is an, an issue, oh yeah, if it's an issue, yes, we have a microfine spray there, yeah. which will take care of that one. Because the resin will actually pick up every detail from your mould, won't it? Oh yes. And I've Very used faithful. in the past yeah. uh, moulds that have actually got writing down the bottom there, mm. and it's picked up that it's all detail. There. Yeah. One other thing that I have used as a mould is my project itself. Now this is going to be a bowl. Uh, the blackwood bowl and there is my mold it is in effect the wood itself it is going to contain the resin it is going to stick to however the resin is going to stick to the bowl but that's not an issue that's exactly what I want it to do so there is another effectively a type of mold now resin is expensive you don't want to waste it first of all what I would like to do is um, just go through some tips about how to actually work out how much resin that you should be mixing up in the first place. Mm, now, good point. Yeah. now, if I was using a, a plastic bowl, for instance, I could quite easily pour some water in there. Mm, pour it into a measuring jug, and but there you've got your volume. That's easy. Yep. Yes, that's right. And perhaps we're adding things to it, so you mm. might even take away a little bit yeah. for it. But it'll yeah. give you a, a rough example of it. Right. Now, in this case here, I've got timber. 
mm. and I can't pour water into there mm -hmm. because resin doesn't react well to water either, mm -hmm. does it? doesn't like water. No, well, it inhibits the cure, so yes, you've got to do something that's dry, and I see you've got some rice there, which is a great way to go. So what I'm good. going to do, now this doesn't give you a perfectly accurate uh, measurement, but it gives you a good rough idea of how much resin I'm going to use, and all I need to do is to pour that rice into there. Could be dry sand or, you know, uh, anything that's a dry material that you can just take out again. And my son was talking to me about this the other day because he was saying that the rice won't pack down as much as resin does, and he's absolutely right. And I suppose sand would even pack down and give you a more accurate measurement yet again. But oh, as well, I... All of these things, you know, which give or take, we may be allowed 10% extra too, I'd say. That's yeah. right. So here is one way of doing it. Now, I've already done this, and I've worked out, once I've poured this back into a measuring jug, I've mm. worked out that this is 500 mil. In fact, I've got 500 mil written on there, just to, as a reminder, and I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up, because to tip it over to show the camera, I've got to actually tip out all the rice, which is what I'm going to do now. And I might even get some of that into the bowl. There we go. So by using the rice, it's going to give me a, an approximation of how much resin I do need. I can simply measure how much rice um, is in this container and that will be give or take a little bit the amount of resin that I need. Well, that'll give you your volume, but what we need to remember, Brendan, a lot of these products, are you're working by weight, and what's called the specific gravity of these materials is a litre of um, r resin actually is about 1.1 kilo. So just a little point there. If you've got to do, for instance, here we've got to do uh, 600 mil pretend, then we've got to do 660 grams of actual resin because it's a it needs that extra bit to build that volume. Now that's a very good point and um, I know a lot of woodworkers aren't good at reading the instructions but I would recommend that you do read the instructions on any tin of epoxy resin that you do get and know exactly how to mix it. My point however is that what I always do is always mix too much and I always have a secondary project a on the tip. go mm. that I can pour my excess yeah. of resin into. Now um, often I'm doing my pepper grinders for instance and I've always got I'm always pouring let's say a dozen pepper grinders getting the moulds prepared up for those doing the casting and I've always got another grinder ready to pour hmm. and it's half poured or whatever. Great idea yeah. Now given that a question I get often often asked mm. is when you pour um, liquid resin onto already hardened resin mm. is there going to be a join there? Okay well yes and no if you pour liquid resin onto a base of cured resin, when I say cured, that it's cured no more than three days, you, it's what's called green, and you'll then get a, a chemical key with the next layer of resin. But if you leave it beyond that, uh, it's advisable to scratch it and sand it, etc., and you, then you'll get a good key. The other point is if you've got a clear block, if you do it within the uh, first 24 hours to three days, that pour, preferably 24 hours, you won't get a line showing where the two layers join, but you leave it longer and you'll get a delineation. And that's a very good point. And the times that I have, in fact, got a line, mm. that line was where dust had settled on the, oh, on the issue, resin. Yeah. So yeah. I've left it overnight, mm. dust has settled on, the, mm. on that um, That's so easy to fix too, uh, Brendan. It's just a little one, if I can yeah. say. Just put a cardboard or something over your curing resin, only about a centimetre above it, and any falling dust which is always prevalent in the workshop, won't get on the resin. Very good point, very good point. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is just our, our mixing equipment. And we'll do another video on about pouring of and mixing of the epoxy resin. Mm. So stay tuned for that one.